Hey, Kristen, there you are with your blue sky behind you. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I'm traveling right now, so I'm pretty lucky to uh, have some good weather. Oh, that's great. Looks lovely. Um, so for those uh, folks who are watching and haven't met you, this is Kristen, and she's been on our team at KK9 for a while, and we're so happy to have her, and she's got some expertise that nobody else on the team has, and so I thought we would just visit and have her tell you a little bit about how she got into working with dogs and what her passions are, and then we're going to have her talk about um, canine uh uh, fit, her fitness fundamental class, canine fitness, and then also about um, the scent work games that we have. So Kristen, can you just tell us a little bit about your journey into working with dogs and what you're up to now? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so I got into uh, working with dogs, um, like training wise, through um, my own dog, uh, my own dog, Iko who was my first search and rescue dog. And uh, we, I, I got him as, he's a, a German shepherd and I got him as a, uh, as a rescue um, from a hoarding situation. Um, and it turned out that he had like really great drive for work and everything, but he had a, a couple issues um, with recall and uh, chasing that, um, that we needed to uh, dive more into to resolve so that way he could become a search and rescue dog. And so that kind of started my journey into the training world. I was running into um, lots of ideas and, and trainers who were offering um, solutions that I, I didn't really agree with on how to, um, to resolve those issues with my dogs. And I found, um, I ended up finding a, a wonderful like group of um, of trainers that focused on um, choice and relationship and um, started working with with Ico on uh, on recall and you know saw some wonderful improvements and that really kind of got me into the training world. Um, so we do, uh, with search and rescue, we obviously work a lot with, um, with scent and with, uh, you know, searching out different, um, in our case, people, but we use, all, utilize all sorts of different, um, methods and, you know, we don't just search for people, we search for all sorts of things and, um, the kind of the modality that we use is through games uh which is where the the scent games class kind of originated from and um i have my second uh search and rescue dog quest who's uh, i got as just a puppy and all of the games that i use in the in the scent uh games class are games that i have used that i've um learned from you know various different uh trainers throughout the world um, that I've used in developing him as a search and rescue dog who is going to be certified um, as a live find um, area search and rescue dog uh, this summer, hopefully, fingers crossed. That <laughs> is fantastic. Yeah, so we, um, the, the games in the class are 100% games that I played with him uh, as a puppy and we still uh, use today just to keep everything fun and fresh and um and everything uh so that's kind of where that uh that class kind of originated from uh was my training with my search and rescue dogs and petting quest right now if that's what I love that. is doing I know we have when Hannah and I visit we can sometimes we have a, a <laughs> pup or a kitty that pops into the screen and of course yeah. people love that hi hands <laughs> <Okay>. um, <laughs> um so yeah and uh scent work is just it's it's so wonderful for like all all dogs I mean every dog you know they use their nose like we use our eyes to um, explore the world and um, teaching them fun 
uh, fun games and everything uh, to do that. It, it builds such a wonderful relationship. It builds um, confidence. Um, and it's such wonderful mental exercise for them uh, Absolutely. And, and tires them out. You know, we when we think of a tired dog is a good dog, you hear that that saying a lot. Um, we just think of exercise and but really giving them that mental stimulation I've had um, after after search training practice you know I've seen Quest and Ico be more tired after five minutes of searching than an hour um, of hiking and running around I so, love that you I love that you share that because I think that is such a common misconception that we've just got to, you know, run our dogs like crazy and, and have them play fetch like crazy and chase mm -hmm. and all this stuff when there is mental exercise that is really more, almost more beneficial. I mean, there has to be a balance. They have to have physical exercise, but that mental exercise can, it, we can never um, discount the importance of that. Exactly. Um, and, you know, you mentioned fetch. What I like about the scent games is it teaches the dogs to use their brains and it gives them challenges, whereas fetch is just kind of a mindless repetition over and over again. And while they're getting physical activity, it's often um, can, it, the repetitive movement injuries can be uh, can happen. And you know they're they're not really utilizing their brain. So are they are they getting much stimulation from it other than um, almost like uh, obsessive? Uh, yes, I'm so glad that you mentioned that because um, with herding dogs, because I've I've had herding dogs myself, and and I've worked with people with herding dogs, and it's always so concerning when you see. Um, a working or a herding breed, one of these dogs that's really driven when 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 you see them fall into a repetitive behavior that can become compulsive, mm -hmm. like that back and forth, that fetch and not not doing any problem solving, not working their brain at all, not having any variation. and and it's just not good for brain health. So I'm so glad you mentioned that because sometimes we think, well, we'll just keep doing this and doing this and doing this until the dog gets worn out. And then um, not only is it not working for what we're trying to do, we're, we're quote unquote wearing them out, but it's not good for their brain health. Mm -hmm. And then uh, on the on the other end of that, their their physical health, um, the fitness fundamentals class um, stems from my experience with my first dog, Iko, who. Um, ended up having uh, major orthopedic issues throughout his career. And I ended up retiring him early uh, from search and rescue because of um, he had a, a total hip replacement. He has um, knee issues and chronic back pain due to the other orthopedic issues that he has. So we have spent um, nearly half of his life uh, in rehab, fixing, um, fixing uh, issues that have gone on with him orthopedically um, and then also after fixing those issues working to make him stronger and stabilized so that way he doesn't run into those issues um, going forward so I have um, ex ex spent lots of time with canine physios and um, uh, rehab and sports medicine doctors and and everything like that and taking classes in um, how to build programs for um, for dogs because um, I use it for my working dog so Ico is a is a rehab case but Quest my young dog who you saw earlier that he is um, I use exercises with him to make him strong um, and to build his muscles to support his body through the uh, sorry through the um, uh, like hard work that he does with search and rescue. He needs to have endurance. He needs to have um, stamina and capacity um, to to search all day long at high altitudes, jumping up on rocks and running and all those other things. And uh, 
you know, to keep him from having to retire early from issues, we work on the fitness. So that's where kind of my background comes in it. But again, we live in Colorado and, you know, all of our, uh, all of our adventures, you know, are hiking and, um, you know, outside of search and rescue, we hike, we, um, you know, we go swimming, we do all these other things. So the, um, the fitness is, is kind of like a combination for dogs. It's kind of like going to the gym, uh, or going to yoga. Yeah. It's, it, it's a combination of building flex. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Play, I'm playing fetch with Quest. <laughs> <That's Not fetch, laughs> we're, play, we're playing with the ball as we go. I love it. Um, and, um, so the the fitness we're building not only muscle and endurance but flexibility and making his body strong the same way that I go to the gym to make myself strong for hiking we're doing that with them and we do it through um again through fun games everything is all about fun and in relationship um in the class and it we really are focusing on the um the the basics and the fundamental parts of it and making it um it fun so there's like no fancy equipment involved um I have and I demo with some of the fancy equipment but I also show ways to use things that you have at home um and you don't need to go out and buy anything uh to just start building some uh easy easy games that you can play with your dog in just like a couple, a couple minutes, uh, a couple days a week. And uh, they're also very uh, mentally stimulating for the dog as well, because they really have to think um, about moving their body. It's like a lot of dogs don't realize that they have back legs. Their back right. legs just kind of follow them along as they, as they go and teaching them how to independently move their back legs um is like it, it's the same as when we try to you know do things that we're not used to like I'm right-handed I throw a ball with my right arm but you know trying to throw a ball with my left hand take to throw it the same way as my right hand it takes a lot of practice and it, I have to think about my mechanics and how I'm working and it, it's the same for the dogs their their back legs you know move independently just like the front legs but they have to think about that and you know make them do that because it's not it's not normal uh yeah. it's not a normal movement for them they have to to think about it. it's not um and or being still uh versus mm -hmm. movement yes. uh, or movement instead of being still there's like lots of um lots of things for them to like think over hard and it, there's it's, nuance instead of just plowing through things yeah. yeah yeah exactly um it's great for um for though you have those dogs that are doers uh like quest while i'm holding his ball is spinning and sitting and doing a down waiting trying to figure out what i'm asking for him when just being still right now would be the best option yeah <laughs> so the fitness um can help turn those doers a little more into thinkers. I love that. And the opposite, taking those thinkers who tend to be really still and think about everything, it helps to get them moving mm -hmm. a little bit more and feeling um, more confident with movement because they feel secure and safe in their body because we go in very slow and controlled movements. They're not going to get hurt and we give them time to think um, and it gives them more confidence to to move their body a little faster um, sometimes than they might be think they're ready for yeah i i love the i love what you said about you know, the dog's back legs and everything um you know i have a tripod dog that just has one back leg and mm -hmm. we've been doing um a very um a very gentle agility class. We have a wonderful mm -hmm. instructor that's been very careful with everything that we've done. Mm -hmm. 
And he's now, he, he's done enough work now, careful work that now he's gotten so much more awareness about where that back leg is that he's been able to do the dog walk. Oh, wow. So yeah, cool. it's very exciting. So mm -hmm. just for anybody who's listening, you know, um, these, these exercises and fundamentals um, can benefit any dog. Mm -hmm. at any stage any age and it's it's fun for them it's really oh, yeah. so much fun so i would just encourage anybody that's that's listening to this recording to think about um signing up for a scent games or fitness fundamentals if you know if there's a dog in your life these are classes that you will enjoy and so will your dog and we just really are i am so grateful kristen to have you on our team i admire your um the the things that you do so much and our your your background and expertise is just so impressive and valuable so thank you so thank much you. for everything that you contribute to kk9 oh yeah absolutely i love being part of the team this is Iko. Hi, 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 handsome. <laughs> well, I will be, um, I'm going to be out there quite a bit next year for starting in August. Um, I'll be there for a whole entire month. And so I'm going to be hopping into those classes and enjoying them along with other, other, uh, participants. And my only regret is that I won't have my own dog with me. He has Aww. to stay here, but <laughs> <He's mine. laughs> he, might he might come out at some point. And if he does, we'll definitely be doing those classes. So oh, yeah, thank absolutely. you so much for your time. Is there anything else that you want to let folks know before we sign off? Um, just one other great thing about, um, about both of these classes is um, they, they can be done indoors. Uh, so like it, it the, everything is is easy to do indoors so like when the weather um is crazy like uh we had those crazy winds the other day um or it's just horrifically cold or just raining or something um it's a great way to still get your dog physical and mental uh exercise uh while it's maybe not so easy to do outside. Oh, thank you for bringing that up because I know it, um, we're, where you guys are in Colorado and also here on the East Coast, we can just have these few days where nobody wants to go outside and do anything, but that doesn't mean that our dog's needs go away. <laughs> right, right. And, and the thing that I love about these is, you know, um, as, as Quest gets stronger, uh, and we, we do longer hikes. It takes longer for him to get tired, mm -hmm. um, physically. But when we do these, um, these smaller exercises, we spend no more than like 10 minutes a day, uh, working on these. Mm -hmm. And he's just, he's exhausted afterward. That's <laughs> and, great. Yeah. That is great. Well, thank you, Kristen. Thank you, Quest. And thank you for Ico for making cameos. Appearances. <laughs> Great to see you. You too. All right. We will talk to you again soon. Thank you so much for coming on today. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. Bye. Bye.